Okay, so I just gave you a few highlights, a few examples of the notion of the brain as a computing device, computational. And that's, by the way, why the field computation and neuroscience is so powerful. We'll discuss it later on, because basically we believe that the brain, the main mission of the brain, any brain, is to compute, as I discussed before. Let me show you examples that single cells, when you record from single cells, in the behaving brain, in the behaving animal, the single cell already shows a reminiscence or aspects of computation. So I'm going to discuss computation at the level of single neurons and the most important probably direct example, first direct big example is by the two Nobel laureate, the Jubel and Wiesel experiment for which they received a Nobel Prize in uh, 1981. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a movie uh, showing the original experiments of uh, Jubel and Wiesel recording from the cat visual cortex, particular region of the visual cortex of the cat, V1, the visual cortex at cortex area 1 of the cat, implanting an electrode in the living, seeing cat and trying to find out what are the parameters being computed, represented by a single cell in the visual cortex of the cat. So here is... What that looks like. So this is smooth David Jubel. Primary visual cortex. This is the part that's tucked underneath. And this is the visual uh, cortex of the cat. Now you begin to see that it's a layered structure. Some places the cells are packed tightly, other places they're looser. Uh, and underneath every square millimeter of cortex, which is about that much, you have something like 100,000 cells. The researchers actually listened in to individual nerve cells firing in the anesthetized cat. So they record they from single cells with different visual images. in the cat. When we started working, Torsten and I, in the late 50s, we set up our first experiments, so this is David and Huber. they didn't go this well, Thorsten because Wiesel. at the beginning we couldn't make the cells fire at so all. So the cat is looking at, a, at the screen, screen, and nothing seemed to work. And they recall from this single cell. One day, we were shining small spots, either white spots or black spots, onto the screen, and we found that the black dot seemed to be working in a way that at first we couldn't understand. And suddenly they hear the, the firing of the it cell. It was the process of slipping tuck, 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 the piece of glass fires. into the projector, which swept a line, a very faint, precise, narrow line across Can you hear the, the retina. Tuck, tuck, tuck? And every now. time we did that, we'd get a response. Now. Okay, so the cell was firing, a particular cell recorded in the cat, visual cortex, the cell was firing in a particular in a particular occasion. And what they found, and this was the Nobel Prize, later they developed a model for it, what they found is whenever there is a line, a line crossing the screen in a particular angle, then this particular cell started to fire. Meaning that the cell responds best when there is a line in the visual world, when there is a line moving, let's say, in this direction, or in this direction. So let's understand it for a second. Let's try to understand what is it that they show. They, so Jubel and Wiesel recorded from V1, which is part of the visual area of the cat, of, ma of mouse, of, of, uh, of humans. So the visual cortex is larger than V1. V1 is the primary visual cortex. They recorded from here, from a single cell, showing, while the cat was looking at the screen, showing different angles of moving lines. And then they found that when they record from this particular cell, one cell by chance, one cell, they found out that this cell, when there is a line crossing the screen, suddenly this cell starts to fire. And when there is a line crossing the screen in a, lit, in a different uh, angle, this cell does not fire. So there are spikes 
responding, coding for this particular direction of line in this particular cell. So we can call this one cell an orientation direction selective cell. In this case, when this orientation of the line is moving in this direction. And just to summarize what Jubel and Wiesel found in this experiment is that when you have an oriented line, 180 degrees or other orientations on the visual, system, on the visual world and you record from cells in V1 of the cat, in some angle for this particular cell, the cell fires more rigorously, more, more strongly. In other, in other angles, the cell does not fire. So for this angle, there are no spikes. For this angle, there are no spikes. For this particular angle, a little bit of spikes. And for this angle, in this, in this case, 90 degree angle, there is a lot of spikes. There are a lot of spikes, less spikes, no spikes, no spikes. There is a tuning for this cell. This cell is tuned to respond to this angle, not to this angle, and a little bit to this visual angle in the world. This was a breakthrough. This was a breakthrough. In the retina, you don't have cells that respond to line oriented lines. In a deeper region, the thalamus, there are no cells that respond to disoriented lines. But in the next level, deeper into the brain, suddenly there are this computation. You compute, the cell computes, the cell response computes to a particular angle, not to others. Okay? So this is a orientation selective, and in this case also moving direction of a cell that is responding to particular parameters in the world. It computes the parameters. So some of your cells now respond to my nose because some of your cell in your visual cortex are sensitive to 90 degrees. Some of other, other cells respond to my eyes, which is 180 degrees, and so on. So that's how you decompose the world, apparently. We and the cats and the mouse and monkeys decompose the world. Early on, in the visual system, in the v V1, early visual system, you decompose the world into lines. And also to other parameters movement, to color, and so on, to edges, and to other aspects. You compute the aspects of the visual scenery, seen, and you decompose it for its features, oriented lines, length, ending of lines, moving of li movement of lines, and so on. So this is at the single cell level, you can see, which is not surprising because somewhere a computation has to be done if you recognize a line, some system must respond to this line. So some neurons must respond to this line. But Jubel and Wiesel showed where this system is.